Welcome to this month's Head Gardener's video log. And what better place to start than the court garden? Everything's starting to grow together, knit together nicely now. There's lots of colour which will lead all the way through the summer. It's also great to see the pollinators buzzing around and doing their thing. A couple of standout plants for me as you walk into the court garden, uh, not only for sort of scent and colour, so a bit of a mixture of the two. Um, this is Dahlia Mystic Illusion, which really does stand out with this vivid yellow flower against the lovely purple foliage. Uh, and then we've got Nemesia. This is Citrine. It has this wonderful scented flower and the scent really sort of lifts as you walk into the court garden, really brought out by this particular plant. With so many wonderful standout plants to see as you walk into the court garden, this is probably one of my favourites. This is Digitalis Illumination Raspberry. It has these wonderful trumpets of flowers, uh, again just with the native form, similar to the native form, very good for the pollinators, the bumblebees in particular love them. The great thing about this one as well is quite often if you cut it back once it's finished flowering you get a sh some side shoots coming up and you get a succession of more flowers. It really continues going uh, as you head through the summer. Another real standout plant as you head through the summer is Lychnus. This is Lychnus coronaria atropurpureum. It has these wonderful iridescent pink flowers which really stand out. It's one of those plants though you do need to keep deadheading. If you keep taking those seed heads off it'll keep flowering for months and months. One of the most talked about plants at this time of the year is Echium pinanana. It's a fantastic plant and features in my plant of the month. It has this wonderful tall flower spike. It's a biennial, so you'll need to get it through the first winter and then you get this flower coming up the second year. It's also a great plant for the pollinators. You'll see the bees covering it and it goes on for several months, so it's a real good plant for value for money. Once you get the seed set, it'll seed in the garden, you get lots of seedlings come up as well, so added value. This is Gunnera manicata. Uh, it's one of those plants that you'll remember from your visit to the tree, but just for its sheer scale, the size of these leaves, it really is impressive when you think this is just one season's worth of growth. It's one of those plants that gives you a little bit of shade from the summer heat, and then if it's raining, obviously gives you a little bit of cover as well. It's a fantastic plant for us at tree, but it's planted en masse and really does create a great dramatic effect with these leaves that tower above you. A real showcase for us at Treba as you head through into the middle of the summer is the Hydrangea Valley. There's around about two and a half acres of mostly mophead hydrangeas. They're a fantastic display of blues, uh, odd pinks but mostly blue. So this lovely sort of sea of colour leading all the way down to the pond and the sea beyond. As you move through June and into July, in and around Mallard Bridge there's so much to see, so many different things coming through uh, through those two months. You've got Things like the Lysomachia firecracker with this lovely purple foliage. You've got the Watsonia bobonica with the pinks and whites. Um, you've got other things like the Philomus rosaliana with these lovely yellow flowers. It's, it's one of those areas that really sort of comes alive. It's a good one for pollinators as well, especially with the Persic area as they come through into July. One of the things we're always keen to do at Treba is create more of a biodiverse um, landscape for our visitors to enjoy and obviously the wildlife. In particular our wildflower areas. So we've got lots of banks, quite dry areas, so perfectly suited to a lot of the wildflowers, where we let them naturalise, do their thing, set their seed and then later on in the season we'll just trim them down, take away everything we've cleared, just so that the seed is set back into the ground again. You've got things like the campion, the foxgloves, they love these dry banks and it really does say add to the interest uh, for our visitors in the garden and I say also the wildlife. One of the great things about Treba, uh, to add to that sort of lovely exotic and unusual mix, is the element of the sea and obviously our own private beach. We've got this Mediterranean planting around here which really takes advantage of this coastal conditions and you can see just how close we are with the bay just behind me. It's a wonderful spot to come down, enjoy an ice cream, relax, take a few hours out and then head back up through the garden. Featuring my top plants of the month this month is Terracaria fraxinifolia. It has this wonderful catkins which hang down through the summer and create a lovely feature as it sort of drapes itself around with this lovely sort of weeping form. Second only really in scale to the Gunner Manicata with its size of its leaves is Tetrapanax papyrifera rex. It's a suckering plant and has a sort of quite a sort of high 
uh, stature to it, so you do need a decent amount of space, but it's a wonderful plant for us at Treba, and planted on sort of group planting on mass here, looks stunning. There are so many choice trees to see in the garden at Treba as you move through the summer, but one that really stands out as you look down through the valley are the Copper Beech. They look absolutely stunning with that lovely deep purple leaves. The foliage looks fantastic as you head through the summer, and you get great autumn colour as well. And in the spring, a lovely flush of pink. So a real sort of contrast as you move through the seasons. But it really does add to that lovely look as you look through the valley.